Hi. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We warmly welcome each and every one of you to this, this webinar on right lubricant for the right application. I'm Mudita Hapwarachi, Head of Parts Operations at CTE, the moderator this evening. It is a tradition in Caterpillar family to remind the audience on safety proceeding before we start any session or a function. Therefore, we suggest you to be aware of where you are located. You may be at home or maybe at home or maybe at office. Irrespective of the place, make sure that you are aware how to exit or direct yourself in an emergency. We, United Tract and Equipment Private Limited, known as DUTE, is in the industry for more than 72 years as the sole dealer for cat products in Sri Lanka. Basically, we are into heavy machinery solutions, power generation solutions, training solutions, water treatment plants, remote monitoring systems, material handling equipments, warehouse solutions, and provide product support services for all customer requirements. In today's context, most of individuals face difficulties in selecting the best fit lubricant for their equipment, machineries, and even for their personal motor vehicle. We organized this session to share the required knowledge on the lubricant and their specifications. Further, at the end of the session, I believe that you will know the benefits of using more suitable lubricant for your equipment or for your vehicle. We have two industry experts from Caterpillar as keynote speakers in this evening. Let me introduce first Mr. Nitin Mohan, Aftermarket Services Manager for Asia Pacific from Global Aftermarket Services Division of Caterpillar Incorporation. He is with 15 years experience in developing and delivering aftermarket solutions for our customers across Asia Pacific. And then Mr. Nick Tan, aftermarket services consultant, and uh, he's the specialist for filters and lubricant from Global Aftermarket Services Division of Caterpillar Incorporation. He also is based in Singapore, Nick possesses significant depth knowledge in lubricant manufacturing and application assessment. Let me invite the keynote speakers to start the session. Thank you, Mudita. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Go ahead, yeah. Nick, can you share the screen, please? Okay, sharing my screen. Okay. All right, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for the introduction, Mudita. My name is Nitin Mohan. Um, as Mudita mentioned, I'm the aftermarket services manager uh, based in Singapore, supporting Sri Lanka and the rest of Asia Pacific. Next slide, please, Nick. Um, so over the next 45 minutes or so, um, between Nick, who's a flu, uh, lubricant specialist, and myself, we'll talk about the reason and needs to select uh, your fluids uh, with caution and how that impacts the productivity of your machine, the owning and operating cost that you incur on your cat equipment, and uh, of course, your cash flow. Next slide, please. So... Um, as we begin the session, I do want to take the opportunity to thank you for your continued patronage to Caterpillar products and services. Um, we are one of the few manufacturers, uh, OEM manufacturers in the world uh, who make our own 
filtration systems and also have proprietary fluids formulas um, that go into our machines. Um, and why do we actually put so much rigor around filters and fluids? Um, it starts off with the promise of quality and durability that the Caterpillar brand name is associated with. Every single product that we make, we ensure that it is tailored to the highest quality standard to make sure that it exceeds your expectation in terms of o and cost, in terms of performance and productivity. Um, on every single component of the machine and overall in its life cycle. And to achieve that quality and durability, the first investment that we make is creating a very robust onboard contamination control uh, system, which comprises of cat filters and cat fluids. So having a very strong contamination control system on board allows the system to stay clean and deliver the highest durability, quality, and productivity in turn, driving up your customer satisfaction. Next slide, please, Nick. So we have a brief video for you, which uh, introduces you to the overview of cat fluids um, and why it's important. We'll play that for you now. We get it. When you're buying fluids, it's hard to really see the difference. They come in a container, they go in your equipment, and some are priced higher, right? Well, with cat fluids, it's easy to see the difference. Just wait and see. Your parts will last longer. Your machines gain uptime and your oil changes can happen less and less. That's why we created cat fluids and filters to help your bottom line. Let's take a closer look at how. There's one takeaway you've got to know. Cat fluids are designed by cat experts to get the most from your cat equipment. It starts with formulation. Not only do product experts weigh in on our fluid designs, but all fluids are developed in conjunction with components, which optimizes the whole system's capability. At world-class facilities, we blend fluids with unmatched safety, quality, and reliability. Then we test from the lab to the field to ensure your fluids deliver real results like this severe application test. When using cat oil, look like this, and using industry standard oil, look like this. How about oil drain intervals? Studies show cat fluids can extend from one and a half times to three times longer than competition. Think of three oil changes. Now, think of just one. Here's the deal. The extra hours, the oxidation resistance, the viscosity stability, it's not to tack on a few extra bucks. It's there because we care about protecting your investment. That's the real difference. It's a difference that really matters. Whether cat fluids or food, your cat dealer's ready to get you started today. So now you know, and now it's time for less maintenance and more high fives. All right, great. Thank you, Nick. So uh, with that brief introduction of why uh, CAT makes the investments of fluids, we now come into um, the section to talk about the overall cost that you as a customers invest in <coughs> maintaining and operating your Caterpillar equipment. So if you look at the life cycle of a Caterpillar machine uh, or equipment, um, you'll actually see that... Uh, during the entire life cycle of your machine, you invest a total of around 3% in filters and fluids. Yes, you would see that on a monthly basis or on a quarterly basis as regular invoicing on your balance sheet. But when you add up the total over, let's say, 15 to 20,000 hours, it accounts for just 3% of the total investment that you make in your capital equipment. But that 3% has a significant importance um, in terms of impacting other major components of your investment on the o and o. If you don't have the right filter that removes the right, <clears throat> uh, removes the dirt in the system correctly, if you don't have a fluid that keeps the system running, delivers power, and maintains cleanliness in the system, that will adversely affect your fuel consumption, which is 24% of your owning and operating costs. And in turn, 
if the filters and fluids are not selected correctly, that could also re result in catastrophic failures and accelerated repairs, which accounts for another 26%. So overall, a 3% investment made correctly on filters and lubricants will save you a lot of cash flow up to 55% as you work through the life cycle of your machine. So, and that essentially is Caterpillar's goal, that we look at the entire picture when we design these components individually to make sure that your machine performance and efficiency is at an all-time high. Um, the machine downtime is significantly reduced. You're able to extend the fluid change outs for a longer period and overall reduce your owning and operating cost. Next slide, please, Nick. So just to give you um, a few minutes of, uh, of context on why fluids are so important, high performance fluids are so important in today's world. So about four to five years back, um, the system pressures inside engines, in the, inside hydraulic uh, lines was anywhere, you know, below 5,000 PSI. In some cases, a bit higher, but it was low pressure systems. With the advent of, of electronics on board um, and the requirement to in, incorporate a higher horsepower um, and power within a smaller form factor, all OEMs have had to design fuel systems or hydraulic systems, which have very, very thin lines and high pressure. So today in um, engine system, you run pressures anywhere uh, up to 35,000 PSI. And in the hydraulic system, up through to 15,000 PSI plus. So at those pressures, the jets of fuel and oil, they can punch a hole through a human body. So when you have that amount of pressure going through a system, through very thin lines, even the smallest particle can just rip through the uh, fuel lines walls and introduce additional sharp contaminants, which cause catastrophic failure. So to give you an idea of how small a particle can co cause significant damage at those, uh, at those pressures, the human hair is uh, 80 microns. The diameter of a human hair is 80 microns. The average clearance in a hydraulic component and line through which the fluid can flow is about 10 micron, right? And uh, the small particles that can cause an impact is about five micron. So it's barely visible to the human eye but that smaller particle can cause catastrophic failure, leading to shortened component life and reduced productivity. That's why investing in a super high efficient filtration system and uh, advanced lubricant is so critical to maintaining your owning and corporate, uh, operating costs down. Next slide, please, Nick. I'll now hand it over to Nick, a specialist who will walk you through the fundamentals of lubrication. Okay, thank you, Nathan. So um, thanks everyone for taking the time to dial in and uh, hopefully, you know, uh, we are all here to know more and to learn more. So in my section, I will actually run through the, uh, some lubrication fundamentals, just four or five slides. And then we'll move on to talk about the exciting part, which is, you know, everyone wants to know about cat oils and grease. So uh, let's, let's get going. So for the first slide, I mean, you know, we all have to know what, what exactly does a lubricant do? So, um, you have to know uh, these four points uh, at the top. So basically for a lubricant, you know, where you're dealing with uh, moving parts that are rolling over one another in the, in the equipment itself. So uh, the lubricant actually helps to reduce friction and wear between the metal parts. You know, not only that, but it also, you know, acts as a heat transmitter. So it cools the equipment uh, also during operation. And as Nitin also said just now, you know, as you're getting higher horsepower, you're drawing more power from the equipment, you're dealing with more, um, you know, higher operating temperatures. So it also cleans and suspends the dirt and contaminants because, you know, fluids uh, can't do their job without filters. So, um, and lastly, it also, uh, because of all of these factors, it protects the internal components of the equipment. So, you know, there are two different variations like high viscosity lubrication and low viscosity lubricant. So for high viscosity lubricant, for example, you know, you will be a low speed, high load application, you know, for example, pins and bushings. So 
uh, where a high percentage of the load actually rests on the surface peaks, you know, in the component itself. And then, or you would have a low um, viscosity lubricant where it will be high speed, low load. So, you know, the, the lubricant uh, actually bears uh, some part of the weight, uh, not just the surface peaks, but, you know, it's called mixed film lubrication. So next, you know, I want to share what exactly is, you know, viscosity, which is this very, very important point uh, when you're talking about lubricants. So um, technically, the technical explanation is, you know, viscosity is a measure of the lubricants resistance to flow. So uh, in, for, for me, the easy way that I, um, you know, get to understand what viscosity is, is, is the density of the fluid density. So um, when we're talking about viscosity, we usually talk about SAE grade, which is the Society of Automotive Engineers. So it's a viscosity grade and, you know, it's a, um, it's a industry standard. So, you know, we have like uh, monograde oils like our TDTO30 and our multigrade oils like our 15W40. So 15W meaning that it's a winter grade. So it's able to withstand lower temperatures. So, you know, in a low viscosity uh, oil versus a high viscosity oil, you know, the, the relationship between viscosity and viscosity index is uh, opposite. So a low viscosity oil, which is a thinner oil, actually has a higher uh, viscosity index and then a high viscosity oil, which is a thicker oil, actually has a lower uh, viscosity index. So um, now on to the topic of base oils and, you know, base oils is a very, very old, you know, it is an industry and a market by itself. So it's a very, very big part of the finish weight of a, let's say a bottle of lubricant. So it actually makes up more than 60% of the weight of that finished lubricant that you're holding. So uh, based on the American Petroleum Institute, API, you know, it, they, they split up base oils into three main classes. So mineral oil, synthetic and natural, which is like an animal or vegetable derived. So uh, technically group one to group trees, you know, they are classified as mineral oils. And then group four is where, you know, if you are, if you are buying a high performance engine oil, for example, you would hear a uh, manufacturer saying, okay, my, my, my high performance engine oil has esters or has PAOs, you know, poly alpha olefins inside. So it's chemically engineered and, you know, to, to change the structure of the, the um, you know, to give it a performance boost. So um, technically, this is a very quick overview of what uh, we are talking about when we talk about base oils. So um, additives, no, additives, um, technically, you know, and again, the additive market by itself, it is a market, you know, you have companies that only do additives and then they sell it to the different, you know, oil companies and oil manufacturers around. So um, it is actually, um, it consists of a very small part of the finished weight uh, of the finished lubricant. So probably at one to 20%, usually it's, it's very little, but, uh, you know, looking at the bubble on the right hand side, um, you know, what you have is the additive pack and the base oils. And basically what you get is the secret formula for that lubricant, which, you know, most oil manufacturers actually keep it very, um, you know, closely guarded. So uh, a, a, an additive actually improves the, you know, um, it reinforces some uh, properties that you want to get out of the lubricant. So, you know, the table on the bottom right hand corner, you will actually see some examples of additives. So, you know, for example, uh, corrosion inhibitors and foam inhibitors, uh, you know, foaming inhibitors, for example, would be very important for hydraulic oil because, you know, when you have air uh, inside the system, it impedes the transmission of heat, you know, when you have water in it. So it's, it's um, you know, every additive plays a part in helping to, um, you know, get to the to, to function uh, and to get the lubricant to function as you want it to. And, you know, like, for example, another one I'll go through is viscosity modifiers. So viscosity modifiers, usually you'll see it in um, engine oils where you would have a multi-grade oil, for example, like a 15W40, a 10W30. So, you know, the, the oil is able to function over a wider range of temperature. So um, specifications. So I'm, I'm sure, you know, looking at the picture on the top right-hand corner, 
you see that, uh, you know, SAE, you know, Society of Automotive Engineers, 15W40 oil. And then you see many, many small words underneath it. So those are what we call uh, specifications. And specifications not only applies for an industry uh, standard, a technical standard, for example, API, uh, for example, JSO for Japan, for example. Yeah, but there are also like uh, OEMs, you know, uh, manufacturers, uh, standards. So like for CAT, you know, um, we have our ECF2, uh, ECF3 uh, standard for our diesel engine, our CAT diesel engine oils. So technically for an aftermarket or for a competitor, you know, um, they would try to put as many specifications as possible into their product so that they can tell you, hey, okay, you have a Volvo, uh, my oil meets the Volvo standard. You know, you have an MB, a you know, Mercedes-Benz, you have a MAN, you have a Cummings. So they will try to get the um, their product to be able to meet as many standards as possible. But in most cases, what happens is they are just targeting for the minimum limit of the standard. So uh, I will share with you more in the next section, but for CAT, for example, for our diesel engine oil, you know, we have a lot of different endurance tests and it's proprietary CAT tests, you know, endurance tests where uh, we actually ensure that our oil is able to clear those uh, proprietary CAT tests. So because of that, um, the, the CAT diesel engine oil, uh, for example, um, actually surpasses all the industry standards that are out there, for example, API uh, and, and whatnot, uh, compared to a competitor that maybe would only be aiming for the minimum limit. Okay, so now um, we're on to the uh, exciting part. So uh, I'll share more about, um, you know, cat oils, you know, lubricants and grease. Uh, and you can get an idea of why, you know, especially if you have a, a cat equipment, you know, definitely we highly, highly recommend for you to use uh, cat lubricants because um, it is specifically designed for that system, which leads me on to this slide. So, you know, throughout the, the entire, um, you know, when, when a CAT equipment is, uh, there's a new product introduction, um, everything is thought of, you know, our engineering team, um, in order, as Nitin shared just now, in order to meet the main goal of reducing your owning and operating costs throughout the life of that CAT equipment when you have it, you know, we have cat oil uh, lubricants, we have cat filters, SOS services, and definitely cat components or cat parts. So from all of these uh, different factors, you actually get the desired, um, you know, performance, the desired efficiency, productivity, and the durability that you would expect of a cat machine. So uh, how does this affect the cat uh, lubricants? So um, where let's say another aftermarket company, you know, they are buying their oil from a oil supplier. So normally what would happen, for example, is the oil supplier would take an existing product that they have and then just uh, put on the uh, customer's label on it. So there is no specialized uh, specialization. There is no, um, you know, tweaking of the oil to ensure that the formula works best on that equipment. So for CAT, you know, that's totally not the case. So uh, we actually specify the base oil, uh, as I shared just now, to be used. We specify what uh, is supposed to go into the additive pack. We, and it's, everything is optimized for that uh, specific uh, CAT equipment. So you know that um, when you are buying that CAT lubricant or that CAT grease, um, you, know, you, you are buying a product that has been tested in the laboratory, in the next stage, component level, which is a bench test. And then lastly, you know, which is the most difficult and uh, the difficult part of the, the clearance, which is the uh, real world application, which is field testing. Because the oil perform, how the oil performs on the bench test isn't the same uh, case as wet, how it performs in uh, the field. Because in the field, you are introducing heat, you're introducing vibration, you're introducing operator, uh, how the operator operates the equipment. So all of these factors actually affects uh, how, uh, how, how dirty the oil gets, you know, how, how, how fast the filter get, gets clogged, for example. 
So I'll touch first on um, our cat diesel engine oil, DEO. So as you can see, um, so how it will go over the next few slides is I will talk about the market driver for that product first. And then I'll share with you more about the interesting part, which is, you know, the key features and benefits that you can enjoy, you know, when you get uh, and you choose to, 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 to buy uh, cat lubricants and grease. So as you can see at the bottom right hand corner, um, the table that shows the progression of API, you know, the Amer American Petroleum Institute for uh, diesel engine oil over the years. So, you know, starting with uh, API CF, you know, CF is um, mainly obsolete by now, but you still see some of it in the market. Um, you know, then moving on to CH4, CI4, CI4+, CJ4, and CK4, and FA4. So, um, the one thing I want to focus on is actually uh, what you would see in your market in, in you know, uh, which is the CI4 or the CI4 plus. So, you know, moving through these different API standards, the key point to note is that, you know, the reason why the standards keep getting upgraded is because of, um, as you can see in the, uh, in the chart below, you know, how many uh, drops of oil signifies how how good the oil is at that different, those different uh, functions. So, you know, as you progress through, you would see um, the oil being able to handle oxidation uh, better, uh, especially being able to handle uh, soot, which leads to sludge, you know, ha handling that better uh, to ensure that you get the best protection for your uh, components, for your cat equipment. Uh, and this is the, the page that uh, I'm sure everyone is uh, interested to look at. So, um, like I shared just now for our cat diesel engine oil, um, where the other oil suppliers or oil um, uh, sellers, they would only aim to meet the minimum limit of the, for example, API standard. You know, for cat, we have, uh, for our DEO, cat DEO, Apart from having that, meeting that API industry test, we also subject our oil to, you know, our own proprietary, uh, you know, endurance tests and other special tests on our engines and on our machines. So, as you can see, you know, um, in the spider web chart on the top right hand corner, you know, you can see how the different oils progress as you get to uh, CI4 and CI4+. plus. So you would see, um, and this is the API, um, you know, the, the, the limits. So you would see an oil that is very good at uh, shear stability, which means that, you know, as the, the, the oil functions in the equipment is able to maintain its form, is able to, to, you know, perform its function as the machine is being operated. And of course, another one is, as I shared just now, which is the soot thickening. So, uh, how the oil actually handles contaminants as they build up in the oil as you operate the equipment. So what's the difference for, for CAT DEO? So because of this different um, CAT endurance test that we put our DEO through, you know, you, we, we use higher levels of dispersant uh, additives, we use higher quality based oils, and we also have very, very good, um, you know, they, they call it shareable, uh, viscosity modifier. So it's the, again, the, the additive pack that goes into the base oil so that you can get, um, you know, we get that formula that's able to perform uh, very well. So again, um, you know, especially if you are, uh, you're using it on a cat equipment, you know, we highly, highly recommend that you use uh, our cat diesel engine oil because you know that the, the cat lubricant, the cat DEO was specifically made to give the best performance, the best durability, the best productivity for your cat equipment or engine. So, you know, you, you can, you can, you can uh, contact your, you know, um, you can contact your, your uh, dealer, your cat dealer to try and see uh, how you can go about uh, enjoying these benefits of using our cat diesel engine oil. And uh, for this proof of performance, uh, our, our hand it over to Nitin uh, for him to talk through um, some of the real world cases that we see uh, with the um, CAT DEO. Thanks, Nick. So <clears throat> in line with the uh, 
with the performance parameters that Nick mentioned in the previous slide, we actually took the oil out uh, into the real world and did some performance tests. And this is one of the performance tests that we did um, in Indonesia, amongst others, where we actually used four 3516 engines. These are the large engines. Um, and these were running in prime power application. So it's a uh, it's, uh, constant high load, 80% plus loading uh, over a sustained period of time. Um, so the engines were actually run, running um, in an intense environment and the test up to 3000 hours. So what we did was in the four engines, we filled two engines with competitive oil and it is one of the most well-known competitive oils in Indonesia, a very good brand. And then we filled the other two engines with the CAD DEO 15W40. Um, and we took the oil sample every 500 hours from all those four engines to look at the condition of the oil, the oxidation, sulfation, nitration, and the um, wear metal limits. At the end of 3000 hours, we actually opened up the engine and we looked at the condition of the components between the engines that were using the competitive oil and the engines that were using the CAT DEO. So if you pay, uh, if you uh, move your attention to the bottom left of the slide, you'll see pistons there, two photographs of pistons. The one on the left is the condition of the piston that was using the competitive oil. You can actually see hard rough deposits on the top land of the uh, piston and hard deposits can cause accelerated wear to the cylinder liners, increase your oil consumption and significantly affect your engine performance. The right picture, is actually the piston top land with, uh, from the engine that was using the cat oil. So you can see it's the surface is smooth and there are no deposits, which essentially talks about the protection, component protection that the cat oil renders to, <coughs> to the engine components. The other two pictures uh, on the right hand of the slide show you the condition of the oil sump and the cam case cover. Again, the left pictures are the ones which were using the competitive oil the right pictures are the ones that's using the cat oil. As you can see in the engines that were using the competitive oil, you see a significant amount of sludge at 3000 hours, which basically means the oil wasn't cleaning and keeping the system clean. Whereas if you look at the cat uh, engines, which were using the uh, cat oil, you'll see hardly any sludge after 3000 hours, which just essentially goes to show that uh, the cat oil has significantly better detergents to wash the system. And so it prevents oxidation at higher temperatures. So you see less soot formation. It has better dispersants. So it doesn't allow the soot to clog together from big molecules and form sludge, right? And then um, it keeps the soot suspended to prevent sludge formation, superior anti-wear additives, which protect the bearings and friction bearing surfaces. And uh, this is supported in the cat oil by very strong corrosion inhibitors, right? Which protect the surface, such as the piston top land from collecting hard deposits. So all in all, a much better formula, proprietary, uh, <coughs> proprietary which uh, beats the competition at protecting your engine and giving you longer component lives. Over to you, Nick, for the next slide. Yeah, thank you, Nick. So you know, um, from diesel, our cat DEO, diesel engine oil, you know, let's move on to um, hydraulic oil. So uh, again, with the market drivers, so I'll explain a bit more. So, you know, the function of a um, hydraulic system, you know, hydraulic pump, you know, a, a fluid power system. So the main goal is actually to use the fluid movement, the lubricant movement under pressure to power the equipment. So, um, the, the main requirements for a hydraulic oil is just power transmission. So, you know, and I, I think everyone is aware, you know, hydraulic pumps are very expensive and it's, it's actually the, the one of the more important parts of a hydraulic system. And again, it, it deals with a very, very high uh, pressure in the system. And because of that, any contaminant that you get into the system has disastrous effects. So um, I understand that, uh, you know, there are, you know, what do you see in the market with the aftermarket uh, competitors, which is why I put um, the graphic on the right-hand side where you see 
uh, the OEMs, not only Caterpillar, uh, but also the other heavy equipment manufacturers. So over time, you can see that you know, the goal for all of us, including CAT, including our, the, the other heavy equipment manufacturers, you know, the goal has always been to give you the maximum uptime availability and to reduce the, the cost of operation, which is, as Nitin said earlier in the webinar, you know, reducing your owning and operating costs, O and O costs. So where you, could, you would see the older intervals where, you know, for example, for Caterpillar, we, our hydraulic oil was actually draining at 2000 hours. You know, then we, we went about, you know, improving the formula. We went about improving the parameters so that it would perform better. And currently our, we called it uh, our hydro hydraulic oil advanced where it would be able to drain at 6,000 hours. And again, this is far beyond uh, what, what the other manufacturers are able to offer. So for example, for Volvo, for their hydraulic oil, they will drain at 4,000. For JCB, they will drain at 3,000 hours. And you know, for Komatsu, for Hitachi at 5,000 hours. So, you know, for, for Caterpillar, which is uh, with SOS, you know, you're able to see a 6,000 hours extended oil drain interval. So that, is you know it surpasses uh, all the other manufacturers in the market and you know you compare this to the aftermarket oils that you see uh, you know in the market right now you know they, they could be draining still at 2000 hours so it's about you know if you get three of those 2000 hours oil you know compared to one uh, caterpillar uh, hydro advance that drains at 6000 hours you know, you'll be spending lesser money with that Caterpillar uh, Hydro Advance uh, draining at 6,000 hours compared to getting three, three oil drains, uh, you know, worth of oil from the aftermarket supplier. So, you know, again, um, as a manufacturer, as, as Caterpillar, you know, in the future, who knows, you know, we are working towards, um, you know, making sure that the hydraulic oil is able to go uh, you know, beyond 8,000, beyond 10,000 hours, uh, depending on how the technology is able to develop. So um, here you can see uh, the, a very quick uh, overview of what the key features and benefits are uh, for our Caterpillar Hydro Advance. So off the bat, you know, the first one that you see in the left hand, uh, the left hand side in the table, you know, 6,000 hours extended oil drain interval uh, with SOS, you know, because of this, you'll be seeing lesser reduced uh, owning and operating costs, increased uptime in your equipment so that you don't need to uh, put the equipment down so that you can, you know, do that oil drain. And, you know, we do have cases, uh, you know, few tests that we have uh, done where the oil with proper, uh, let's say, uh, a CVA that you, you do with your cat dealer, uh, where it's able to surpass this 6,000 hours easily. So, you know, again, the formula for our Hydro Advance is very, is a very, very, very good formula. You know, it gives long lasting anti-wear protection, for example. So, you know, like you would see um, uh, zinc. So normally what, what you would see in the aftermarket oils uh, would be a, this level of zinc. So for our Cat Hydro Advance, you know, uh, zinc and hydraulic oil has had a very, very good history you know, you won't go wrong with zinc in your hydraulic oil because it has always been shown to give uh, the best protection for your uh, hydraulic system. So for our CAT uh, Hydro Advance, you know, there is uh, a very, very um, uh, well, well uh, put in amount of uh, uh, zinc, zinc, le uh, zinc levels. So, you know, zinc being an anti-wear agent, it forms a protective layer on your hydraulic, uh, you know, the hydraulic components, you know, in this hydraulic system. So it's able, uh, you know, it performs very well, uh, especially when you are talking about the, um, the, the, the protection that you can get from, from zinc, especially. So it's also um, another one that I'll go through is actually the, um, the ability for our cat hydro advance to deal with water and to deal with air in the system, because you know, as your hydraulic uh, cylinder, for example, is operating, you know, it, it evidently, you know, water and air will get into it. So uh, where an aftermarket 
hydraulic oil would actually shed water, which is, you know, they would just um, reject the water. Um, for, for CAT uh, Hydro Advanced, it actually holds the water uh, within the oil itself so that it can be carried away uh, properly instead of shedding the water where it might cause damage to your hydraulic pump. So, you know, again, because of the extended, uh, uh, you know, oil drain interval, you'll be seeing lesser owning and operating costs. And um, the, the last one I want to touch on on this slide is actually the bottom right hand corner. You can see with CAT Hydro Advanced, the picture on the left. So these are the, um, you know, the hydraulic pump, the slipper sockets. So you can see even after two, 200 hours, and this is like a, um, a very harsh test, you will see that the, the slipper sockets are still looking very good. But on the other side, on the right hand side is a standard hydraulic oil that you can buy in the market. And you know, the test was terminated after 178 hours because of the uh, slipper wear causing catastrophic failure. All right. Yep. While we actually get online, are there any questions that we can take for you on uh, engine oil or um, uh, oil? Yeah, Nathan, uh, we have got one question uh, from the audience. That is, uh, what are the differences of ATI CH4 and CI4? Right, uh, so the differences of API CH4 and CI4 essentially um, it circles around uh, your ability to uh, handle soot, oxidation, uh, oil pumpability, and emissions control. So those are the four key parameters. And uh, in the presentation, you actually would have seen those are listed on the left-hand corner. And as you go from APS CH4 to CI4 and CJ4 and CF4, you will actually see that the requirements for those parameters um, increases significantly. Sorry for that. That's fine. Yeah, yeah back. Yes. yes. Sorry for that. <laughs> Um, uh, carrying on with the, you know, with the webinar, um, um, Nitin, would you like to go through this, uh, this uh, proof of performance for a Hydro Advance before we move on uh, to Cat Grease, which is the last part of the webinar? Sure. So um, this particular slide shows you again in line with the theme that we've been following through the presentation. This shows you the proof of performance for hydraulic oil. So on um, excavator, a cat -cat excavator. Um, we actually did over multiple excavators, the same model 324 hex. We did oil samples on uh, the hydraulic oil used to see if there was wear in the iron components and how well the oil is protecting the iron components. So in the, the y-axis is the iron parts per million, right? The particles in, uh, <laughs> in parts per million. And on the x-axis, you're seeing the machine hours. What you need to pay attention is first to the yellow dots. As you can see, um, despite the hours on the machine going up from zero to 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 hours, the amount of iron particles in the oil sample that we got for the Hydro Advance, which is the yellow dots, was very minimal, which meant it was effectively protecting the surface and the iron component in the system. On the other hand, the green dots are essentially competitive oil samples. And as you can see, as the hours uh, you know, started exceeding on the, on the machine, you are seeing a lot more iron particles in the competitive oil. So on an average, um, in the first 2000 hours of machine operation, the Hydro Advance has only 8.6 parts per million of iron particles, whereas the non-Hydro competitive oil is almost two times the particle and it increases from there. So in a sense, the additive pack and the composition of Hydro Advance protects the iron components very, very well against uh, competitor oils. And, um, yeah, just to just to explain also, like uh, uh, this is a very other uh, quick uh, proof of performance also. So, you know, where where um, the cases where you know customers have actually went through a and done the servicing with our. Um, you know, our CAT uh, CVA, you know, customer value agreement where, um, you know, the, the CAT dealer is able to give you the best service and, 
to ensure that your equipment is in the, the, the tip top shape, you know, the best um, uh, maintenance that you can do. Our Hydro Advance has actually shown, um, you know, amazing uh, drain intervals while keeping the components um, clean. So, for example, you know, we have had a 980H uh, wheel loader uh, showing over 12,000 hours uh, before you actually, the customer actually drained the oil. And, you know, through all of that, you know, the SOS, the standard oil sampling results showed that the oil was still, was still kept very clean and able to, to keep the hydraulic system very clean. And another one was a 390 excavator, for example, uh, clocking in over 11,000 hours. So again, you know, our CAT Hydro Advance, a very, very good hydraulic oil. So, um, and here you can see like, a, you know, a whole suite of uh, CAT lubricant products uh, that you're able to get. Um, you know, we have our CAT diesel engine oil, we have our Hydro Advance, you know, we have our CAT grease and uh, also our, uh, you know, the transmission oil, transmission drive train oil. So, you know, a complete suite of CAT lubricant products that actually helps you um, give the best uh, performance and the best uh, durability and efficiency for your CAT equipment. So, and I'll actually touch a little bit on, um, on grease. So, for grease, uh, just to round up this webinar, um, for grease, you know, the, the demands now that we are seeing for Greece, you know, it, you are, you're actually having the Greece uh, protect increasingly complex uh, components, you know, as the equipment actually gets more and more um, complicated, you know, you're, you're demanding more power from it. So, you know, when you have a Greece that is a, a, a good Greece that's able to require you to have lesser uh, re-greasing intervals, uh, you know, the grease is able to perform in um, extreme pressure and temperature applications. And of course, the key point uh, of uh, one of the functions of grease, which is to protect the, the components from the, uh, you know, water and dirt contamination. So, you know, all in all for grease, uh, most of it falls under the NLGI, which is a industry standard for grease, uh, NLGI grade two. So, in the next uh, couple slides, I will actually share like, uh, you know, what exactly is the key features and benefits of our cat grease. And, you know, um, just to round up uh, this, this uh, presentation and thank you everyone for, for staying uh, on and to learn more about our cat, uh, cat lubricants and grease products. So what you see in the market now is actually, uh, for example, maybe a simple lithium grease. So, a simple lithium grease is a general industrial grease. So if you look at the, the micrograph on the right-hand side, so the one on the left is actually uh, what you would see of a simple lithium grease. So you, know, you would see the strands of, uh, you call it soap, where you would be uh, quite spread out. And then on the right-hand side is what you would see of a lithium complex grease. So the structure of the grease is better and, you know, and which is the reason why for our uh, cat grease, you know, the, the lowest tier cat grease that you can get is actually our cat utility grease. So, you know, and research have shown that, you know, um, lithium complex grease is actually more suited for high temperature industrial services. For example, uh, rolling element applications, for example, your, your pins and your bushings and for your undercarriage. So, while simple lithium greases might be cheap and it might be a general industrial grease, you know, our cat grease with the minimum lithium complex uh, structure is actually able to get, um, to give you better, um, uh, better function for the grease. It's able to, to have better water resistance so that it protects the joint and more importantly, it stays in the joint while you operate that equipment. So again, even though you might see simple lithium greases out in the market, you know, always be sure that when you are purchasing a cat grease, you are getting a product that has been specifically tested and, you know, the formula has been chosen because it gives you uh, the best uh, O and O uh, cost reduction and the best uh, performance. So, um, for example, here, uh, and this is uh, the last 
the last slide uh, just to share with everyone. So we actually did a um, utility grease, which is uh, our CAT utility grease, lithium complex grease, a proof of performance on a customer in China. So, you know, the customer had a fleet of uh, 320D2 excavators and they were using a simple lithium uh, grease that they were getting from a aftermarket uh, supplier. So in trialing our cat utility grease uh, with uh, this customer, you know, the customer was able to save up to uh, US dollars, uh, $12,000 a year. And it all came from the increased uh, re-greasing intervals just because the customer used cat utility grease. So, which means that the, the you know, instead of buying more aftermarket grease, you know, just using the cat utility grease, you know, um, the grease could actually last longer and hold in the joint longer, which means that the customer was actually spending lesser in, in purchasing grease. And along with the uh, lengthened re-greasing uh, intervals, you know, all in all, it, it resulted in uh, better savings and, you know, um, uh, higher productivity for the customer. Yeah. So again, uh, I mean, thank you everyone for, for uh, you know, dialing in to learn more about uh, cat uh, lubricants and cat grease. So uh, hopefully um, everyone uh, who's online, uh, you know, you're able to learn more and to hopefully this webinar is very beneficial especially for you to learn more about our cat lubricants and cat grease. Thanks, Nick, and thank you everyone again for your time. Um, we have a few minutes to answer any questions that you have. I did want to address the previous question a little more in depth. Um, um, so the difference between CH4 and CI4, you actually have 14 separate parameters that are listed out by API, right? That includes uh, um, soot viscosity and shear control, um, which is a new one. Um, has high temperature shear, uh, your elastomer compatibility, then it has a, a component protection system uh, like piston ring and cylinder wear, valve train wear, um, and then the amount of copper, lead, and tin erosion, how much foaming can the oil control, um, and then there are viscosity related parameters, oxidation parameters, and the amount of piston deposits um, that you can control in the oil. So there are 14 parameters, and uh, of the 14 parameters, for a CH4 oil, only 12 are applicable as in, the, in the graph, right? To get a certification for a CI4, you need to exceed the CH4 spec uh, up to CI4 uh, spec for the 12 parameters. And then in addition, you also need to meet the high temperature shear and elastomer uh, compatibility to be certified as CI4 or a CI4 plus oil. Now, the Caterpillar ECF standard that you see on the left not only requires the oil, the cat oil, to meet and exceed all the 14 uh, tests that CI4 or CH4 oil require, but in addition, as you can see on top of the, uh, <coughs> the table here, you have four endurance tests that um, the oil needs to survive. Plus, we have an additional parameter on sulfated ash, which is a coefficient of your uh, soot production in the system. So you need to keep the ash limit uh, below a certain level, which is 1.50 percentage weight. And if you meet all the 14 parameters, plus the six parameters set out by Caterpillar, then you can get certified as an ECF2. And that's the difference between CI4 and ECF2. Does that answer the question? Right. Um, if, if you have any follow-up follow questions, we'll be uh, on that point. We'll take them and we can write out a detailed response to you. Any other questions online? Uh, the, the impact of uh, sulfur in fuel, uh, other, than change, other than the changing interval, is there anything else that you can do to extend the life uh, of the oil changes? Good question. Um, so I'll add what I know about sulfur and the relationship of, uh, of uh, oil drain intervals. Yes, the sulfur content in oil um, in your fuel will definitely have an impact of, on how long you can actually extend the, uh, 
the cat oil or regular oil drain into well extension. Um, you have to, and there is a parts per million requirement on sulfated ash, uh, right, or sulfur um, in the system. It is 5,000 parts per million, I think, in your fuel. If you are above that level, you won't be able to extend the uh, oil drain interval uh, to 500 hours, right, which is what we target at. If it's below that, then one way you can actually ensure that you can extend the oil drain interval is you will have to, at least for two cycles, consistently monitor uh, the SOS sample at every 50 to 100 hours. So after 250, you monitor it at 350, 450, and 500 to see that your uh, total base number and your total acid number, the TBN and TAN, are within the limits. Right. Only then can you extend it up to 5,000 hours. Um, in addition to that, um, obviously there's no uh, magic trick in terms of adding any additional additive into the oil to beat the sulfur problem in fuel. You just have to make sure that your fuel is below that limit uh, with sulfur and then do every 100 hours uh, the SOS sample to make sure that your TBN and TAN um, are in scope. Nick and uh, Bunchun, I see your line. Anything to add there in terms of uh, extending oil drain intervals with high sulfur fuel? Um, from, from my end, I, I think Nathan, you explained it very well. I mean, um, again, um, the impact of sulfur on, uh, especially for, for engine oil, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to control. I mean, so you, have, you just have to ensure that, you know, you are using, um, you, you are aware of the sulfur levels that you're actually putting into your system of the oils that you're putting into your system. So, uh, I mean, Bunchun, if you have anything to add, uh, yeah, please uh, feel free also. Uh, yes, thanks. Uh, thanks, Nick Bin and Nick for covering that. I think you have pretty much uh, wrapped it up well. I think sulfur is a very acidic component. Um, just maybe a question to the person who has raised this question. Uh, what is the sulfur limit in diesel in Sri Lanka now? Uh, I'm not sure the exact number. Of course, there are two types of uh, diesel available. Uh, what I don't know is uh, what are the exact uh, sulfur levels. Okay, if the sulfur level in Sri Lanka is 10 ppm, then using a CI4 definitely extends the ODI from 500 hours and up with SOS. And if you use a CH4 oil, which is what competitors offer in Sri Lanka now, you can do up to 250 hours. So that's on the practical side, besides the 14 parameters and characteristics that Nitin and Nick described about, on the practical side, this is the difference between CI4 and CH4. I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you. My pleasure. I know we are on time now, but if there are any other questions, we'll take a few. If we run out of time, we can definitely take your questions and we'll respond back to them uh, via email. Uh, uh, Nitin, before we move on to the next question, uh, I would like to invite the participants who are joining from the live from Facebook. Uh, they can raise the question in the comment line. So we can even later on, we can uh, answer their questions. Sure. Absolutely. Any other question from the participant? You can raise your question in the chat box also.
Looks like uh, there is no any other question. That's fine. If if, uh, if we have any questions online uh, later as well, if you post it on the Facebook feed, we'll take that and we'll uh, respond. Yes. Back. Yeah. Uh, one one small question. Uh, uh, now these uh, these oils are basically the cat dio. Uh, how does they perform on other competitor engines? I can give it a shot. Nick, you want to get started? Yeah, yeah I, I, I mean, um, and uh, that, that's where we, you know, encourage like few trials, right? So um, understanding that, uh, you know, a customer such as yourself, you might not only have a, a cat machine, in your in your fleet so if you have multiple equipment you know you might have multiple um, uh, competitor or, you know other non-cat equipment so you know and we have seen with results where um, even with uh, the you know using our cat do on on a non-cat equipment you know uh, you know if you follow the uh, the whatever manufacturers that uh, the equipment belongs to so as long as uh, uh, the you you see that for example if the manufacturer says that their do has to at least meet the api uh, ci4 uh, grade so you will know that uh, you know our cat do actually meets that grade for example and uh, apart from that uh, our cat do also meets uh, several other uh, non cat uh, specifications so for example like uh, um, you know the, the the men or there, there's there's a few others that you can actually uh, see, uh, uh, and I can share with you more also, but um, it's not just uh, purely targeted, you know, for, for cat equipment. You are able to, to, you can test it out and you are able to see the benefits that you can get uh, even if using, you're using cat DEO on uh, non-cat equipment. Uh, hopefully that's I can add to that yeah. uh, just a bit. And next right, uh, we are obviously certified CI4 and CI4 plus. Right. And as you can see in this slide that's on the screen, we don't just meet the standard, we far exceed it. So any engine, which most of our OEM uh, competitive diesel engines are certified to, where there's a requirement for a CI4 or CI4 plus oil, you can trust the CAT oil to actually outperform the competition in that engine. Um, a few examples that I can think of the top of my mind is we actually use CAT uh, engine oil in two stroke bikes in Indonesia, right, quite a few. And uh, the performance is, is great. Uh, there are no failures. I know of instances where it's used in Cummins, en Cummins engines uh, and we are hitting the oil drain and travel expectations. So um, as long as there's a requirement for a CI4 oil or a CI4 plus oil on the competitive equipment, um, you can use the cat oil. Won't you anything to add there? I Yes, I think that pretty much subs it. Uh, just to add to that, uh, we are very confident about cat oil. In fact, you could see on this slide 15, cat do ECF2 spec far exceeds all the API CI4. And as Nitin pointed out, it can even be used in motorcycle oil, which is under the API S grid. And indeed, not shown on the slide here, it actually carries some uh, backward API S certification so it can actually be even used in pickups motorcycle etc so uh, but again the proof is in the pudding we would recommend our customers i mean like the pop that we have featured earlier to do a side-by-side -side test and let's push the oil to the limit to see how far we can go i mean we are very confident it can go beyond 500 hours Uh, we have got another question. How to achieve 6,000 hours change interval intervals for hydraulic oil? I think now we, uh, it was explained in the slides, but uh, again, there is a question. Okay, so uh, let me go to the hydraulic oil slide so everyone is able to see it. So, I, I mean, um, if, you, if you look at the the top right uh, corner with the graphic there, you know, for, for our CAT Hydro Advance, uh, you know, CAT guarantees 3,000 hours minimum without SOS. So, you know, 
pushing pushing the uh, hydro advanced oil all the way up to uh, six thousand and beyond. You know, it is highly recommended that you uh, you stick with uh, regular SOS standard oil sampling. So, for example, for hydraulic oil, typically you do it at about five hundred hours, and and you know as you go through the intervals. So, apart from that, you know, ensuring that you have SOS because you know with SOS done properly. Um, uh, Caterpillar guarantees that our CAT uh, Hydro Advanced 10, you know, is able to go uh, to meet that 6,000 hours uh, drain interval point. And secondly, you know, as you saw in the proof of performances that we shared for our Hydro Advanced, uh, the servicing, we highly recommend that, you know, you leave the, uh, you know, you, you trust the servicing of your equipment uh, to your CAT dealer because your CAT dealer, you know, they have technicians that are trained to, to actually um, perform the maintenance, the scheduled maintenance, to ensure that the proper procedures and processes as thought by Caterpillar are applied so that you know, nothing goes wrong and you know, the proper uh, maintenance practices are followed. And to next point, um, as you mentioned just now, um, if you're at 4,000 hours, that's without SOS, but then uh, you need to get to 6,000 hours, you'll do your SOS at 4,500 hours, 5,000, 5, uh, 500 hours, and hit the 6,000 hours mark. So between 4,000 to 6,000, there'll be three additional SOS that you have to do to push it up to 6,000 hours. And if the site conditions don't change um, drastically, your operator habits don't change drastically, there is a possibility, obviously, in recommendation with UPE technicians that uh, once you do it on a fleet or a machine once, and if the parameters or environment doesn't take change much, much, you could potentially, with obviously UPE's technician recommendation, make the standard oil drain interval 6,000 for that machine, again, provided that the conditions are not changing. I hope it, uh, we gave a clear answer to the question. Uh, looks like there is no more questions. So everything started will have an end. <laughs> we have come to end of our today's session. We hope everyone join with us, learn something new about lubricant. And I'm sure when you select lubricant next time, this information will be useful for you. I take this opportunity to thank our keynote speakers, Mr. Nitin Mohan and Nick Tan and Boon Chun for their valuable time spent with us. Also, a big thank for all the participants for the time they used full session and stayed with us. And without you, this would have not been successful. Until we meet with our next webinar, good night. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, and good night. Good night. Thank you. It was great learning.